everyone, thank you for being here. Today we're going to talk about the most important college class that I took and the lessons it taught me that I continue to go back to to this day. And I truly go back to this moment in time whenever I'm going through a hard time and I will go back to it multiple times a day if necessary because it was such an important point that I was able to prove to myself and you have these experiences yourself. The most important things you've gone through are your own and if you ever look for motivation, look to your past and what you've been through and how you've been successful and what you've achieved to tell yourself you can do it because you did it however many years ago and you can definitely do it now with more experience and more understanding of the world and yourself. But with that being said, the class was Calculus 3. Now that might not mean a lot to almost anyone except the people who went to the school that I did. It was an engineering school, but it was broken up weirdly because we would have four terms that were seven weeks long instead of the normal 14 week semesters and i studied chemical engineering and environmental studies so math was a big part of what i needed to do and a lot of the other engineering majors so because i also wanted to do two majors that had never been done before together i did not have a lot of time to take a lot of classes and i wanted to transfer all of my AP credit, but only two of them would. So I really had to jam pack like 70 credits when I had the space for like 54. So I had to skip wherever I could. And there was a math placement test that we took and I was placed into calculus three, meaning I would skip calculus one and two. And I was worried about that because I was like, should I be in calculus three? Like I didn't get the grade they expect on the exam like am i going to be able to pass this class and i actually called the school and i was like hey i was placed into calculus three but i don't know if i should take it because i didn't do that well in the exam and they were like if you placed into the math placement test in the cal three then you should take it because you clearly knew enough to pass the test and that person changed my perspective on my capabilities and for asking permission because I was like, oh, if I was accepted into this test, into this, uh, into this class, into this job, then somebody understood that I had the criteria to be able to succeed in it. And that's really the first lesson is you are capable of being there and you can prove that you should be because you've already done so. You wouldn't be where you are if somebody didn't see the potential and didn't think that you could realize it. So that person saying that really did change my perspective on things because I was like, man, like, yeah, I did place into it. I didn't pass with the other test, but this test I did, so I should take it. And with that understanding, I went into the class and I was like, I am going to do whatever I need to do to pass this test. And a lot of people were trying to like mitigate expectations of ourselves because they were like, this is harder than anything you've done before. The fast pace is going to be more difficult. You're adjusting in every scenario of your life, but so don't be too hard on yourself if you don't start getting the grades that you want. And with that being said, I went into my first day being like, I have no idea what we're going to do. And I sat in the front row and the person next to me ended up becoming a friend for the rest of college. And we we often went back to the, the first day that we met because I was like, hey, like, should we study together? Like, what's your number? And I didn't think anything more of it. Um, and he was he was kind of like thrown off, but he was like, okay. And then he told me, he's like, I literally never give anyone my number, but you just seemed so genuine that I did. And that has absolutely nothing to do with the class, but it was really funny, but everyone was talking about how they had took calculus in high school and they all got fives on the exam. And I was like, I did not. And I was just like, okay, like we're gonna figure this out. So the teacher started the class and he told us about a math center where we could go to get tutoring if we so needed it. And that it was available until like 10 o'clock at night um every day even on the weekends and he recommended to go there because there would be phd students who would offer their help so i was like all right like let me go see what this is about so we finished the class i had absolutely no idea what he was talking about in class i was like i know what a 
derivative is, but I did not know what he was doing on the board. And I was just like, okay, I, I don't even know if this was actually what the material was. It feels so long ago now. Um, but I went to the math center and there was a few other kids there. And I was like, did you guys understand what's going on in class? They're like, yeah, like we did that in our last few weeks of high school. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so far behind. So I was just like, all right, like show me what you guys know. So they helped me out and we you know we spent a few hours there and um, we went to get dinner together and we all had meal swipes. So we just like went to the food hall after and it was great. So we started this like friendship and every single day after I was done with all of my classes, I was also taking chemistry and an environment, like intro to environmental studies class. So, which is pretty much how every single one of my terms was mirrored um, after that. But I went to the math center every single day for three, four, five hours a night, just doing math problems and just doing math problems and just learning and repeating and finally just getting the information together to start to understand and now it was like the fourth class and it was our first test so that's that's really what it is when you have a seven week term like your your midterm is three weeks after you start the class your final is seven weeks six to seven weeks after you start the class so your first test has to be within the first week and a half so it's it's exam day and we're doing the test and i was like oh I actually understand this material and we did so many of these similar questions so I ended up doing fairly well. Um, I think I got like above a 90 on every test that I took so I ended up getting an A in the class and I was so excited and every day, no joke, I went to the math center and within three weeks of doing that I was teaching the kids who had supposedly known more than I did or who did know more they did legitimately know more than I did but I was teaching them on like tricks on how to do the math problems because I had spent so much time doing it and it just taught me that everything that I want to do is only going to be achieved by continually practicing it that I will put in the effort to see the result and then I will see the result it won't be this like mysterious thing like oh I just happen to figure it out and the more I did it the better I got and I continued to go to the math center until the end of the term and I passed easily and it was amazing I continued to be friends with the people who were in in the study room with me and we were we were kind of close throughout the yes the rest of the years but it was just me and the music and we were doing math and just repeating it and doing it and I filled so many notebooks of just math problems and it really just honed into me that like anything that I want to do is possible through putting in the effort to do it and I actually decided on the school because they had an environmental studies program but I almost wasn't able to do both majors because nobody had done it before and they kept saying like this just isn't possible like you're gonna have to take multiple classes more than you would on a normal schedule and most people can't do that like you really are probably not going to be able to do it and you need a lot more credit you need to come in with a lot more credits if you think you're going to be able to do this otherwise you're going to have to overload um every single semester which meant like you take four instead of three classes in those seven weeks and you could only do that once every 14 weeks to take four classes instead of three they're like you're gonna have to do that every single semester so all eight semesters of college you're going to have to take more classes and you can't fail any one of them otherwise you won't have enough time to make up any classes so it was this very looming thing but I wanted to do it and the reason why it was so hard is because chemical engineering and environmental studies did not have as many overlapping subjects as every other major because chemical engineering just required so much of you to take specific classes and they wouldn't necessarily always double count um I was able to work around it with like this other humanities requirement so I was able to do it and I did graduate with both majors and then after I graduated they changed the name of the second major um, so technically nobody else has ever been able to get 
those two double majors. There were some other chemical engineering students later on who were interested in environmental studies, but they didn't go on to do a double major. So with all of that going on, I just had to prove to myself within that first term that I could do it, that I had absolutely no idea how difficult it was going to be, but I also realized it was going to be as difficult as I made it because if I didn't put in the work, I wasn't going to see the results and I wasn't going to be able to graduate with both majors. So to me, it really was just able to prove to myself, like, you can do this. Like, you're going to put in the work and you're going to work a lot more hours than other people. And it was the first seven weeks of college. Everybody else was just trying to get to know people. And I was sitting in the math center doing math. And I would go and I'd pick up food and then I would go to the math center and I would stay there until it closed. And then I'd go home and do my other homework that was also difficult. And then I think, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I got all A's that term, but it was, it was quite the time. I think I got B's in all my chemistry classes and considering I was a chemical engineer, but he's like, aren't you supposed to be better at this? And I was like, I am doing what I can. And I think I took like seven or eight chemistry classes and I, I'm glad I don't have to do it anymore but uh, I loved the math and then I went on to calculus four and differential equations which was the max that I had to do for math and then we had to do some physics as well um, but it was really important for me to experience that and was absolutely just the thing that mattered to me more and I really had to figure out for myself that I can't buy into what anybody else is telling me about myself or my capabilities. And I do admit that I did buy into that person telling me that I could do it and that if I placed into it, I could. But all of the other people telling me, well, you probably won't get a good grade or you can't do this double major and you can try, but you probably will have to just minor out and that's going to be difficult and no one ever's ever, no one's ever done it so it can't be done and that was something that was constantly told to me they're like well no one's ever done this so why do you think you can and I was like why do you think I can't because no one else has and I remember when it was accepted students day and I showed up and I was and they I went to the environmental studies uh major first and it was uh, a really important day for me because that was the day I decided to go to that school. And the teacher literally, st or the professor stood up there and he was like, you can double major environmental studies with any other major on campus except for chemical engineering. And I raised my hand after he said that bold 17, 18 year old me was like, um, excuse me, but that's what I wanna do. So how are we gonna make that happen? In a room full of like 20 people, and he was like, oh, like not really taken aback, but he was like, okay. So then I like went to his office for an hour after and I was like, I want a double major in this. Like I will decide WPI, that was the name of the school that I went to. I will decide this school today if you are willing to join me on this journey to figuring this out. And he was best friends with a chemical engineering professor who bought into being my major advisor and rest is history. I ended up deciding that day. I bought this water bottle that says the school name on it and I carried it with me to school the next day and people were like, did you decide? And I was like, I did. And it was crazy, but amazing. And then the whole summer was spent trying to figure out the details and yeah, it was quite the whirlwind story. And there's a lot more stories like that, that I do have to share, but Though everything seemed difficult, everything seemed a little less impossible after that first term and that first math class and just proving to myself, I put in the work, I put in the hours, I sacrificed in certain ways. I really didn't connect to the people that I lived with in the house until like my second and third term because I just spent so many hours not at the house and not with any of my roommates. I also had my own room because my roommate the first day wanted to live with someone else and then I just never got another roommate. So I was just so weird on so many levels. Like I didn't have a roommate. I was never at the house. I was always just not there. And they were just like, who is this person? Like, she's so weird, which is fine. Um, but I was, I was doing math and I loved it. I loved the math that I did. Um, I think I took that same professor for the next class, which 
was amazing and and then I took a physics class that I also fell in love with and literally went up to the professor after and I was like, if you do any type of physics class at a higher level, like I will take it. I couldn't actually make that come true because of all the classes I had to take, but I was just so inspired and there were some te some professors who were just so good at sharing and teaching, which definitely inspired me to do that on my own right with the other things I did in college, which I will talk about because I do think that there's so much value there to share about just what I've what I've gone through and how I've had to change my mindset since I was little and everybody always told me like, you can't do that. It's not possible. And there was other times where I had proved to myself it was possible, even though others said it wasn't. But that was one of the most important ones and it was really exciting to see that I got an A. And then I talked to the people that I lived with a few terms later and we were talking about calculus three and they're like, oh, it's the only B that I got. And these people were so smart. One of them ended up being my roommate for the rest of college. And he was extremely smart and so was like his best friend. They were so smart. They literally didn't have to like study at all in order to do well in school. And they didn't get um, an A in the class. And they were like, I don't know, something just like didn't click. And I was like, and they were just shocked that I got an A because like they also thought that they were smarter than me, which which is fine. I never thought that I was smart. I just thought that I would put in the work and I would get the thing done that I wanted to get done. And that was what I proved to myself. I was like, you don't have to be the smartest in the class, um, but you can do it. And I did do it. And those hours in the math center taught me that it takes hours to get to where you want to, but you can get there you have to decide where you're going to spend your time. And I decided to spend my time proving to myself that it could be done. So my first seven weeks were spent in the math center, learning math and proving to myself that I could handle the rest of my college career. And every time that life got hard and I didn't know if I could go through the classes, I would go back to the math center me and be like, you did it your freshman year. You had absolutely no idea how to, what the word, what the formulas on the board meant that first day and you did it. So you can do this now too. And it was something that I go back to that I went back to a lot while I was in school and something that I'm going to keep going back to even more now that I remember that, yeah, that was a really good thing for me to, to have an experience to have and change my life. And you have those experiences yourself. There's plenty of things that you have achieved and gone through. And I hope that when you do think of the past, you go back to those moments because those moments you shined as a version of yourself that you want to be. And it's not a far off imaginative goal of trying to be that person again or trying to be that version of you. You've already done it continue to embody it and continue to move forward. So I hope you got something out of this fun story about a math class, but there's inspiration all around us if we're willing to look at the world and accept that it's our life and it's our world that we're creating. Let me know what was your favorite class in college or favorite class in high school or did you hate it completely? Was there a different experience that inspired you that you could do something what is it? This is our one life and we get to live it. We get to have as much enjoyment of it as we want. So I hope you got something out of today. We will talk soon and have an amazing day.